Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline and in today's video we're going to talk about projects that I've been working on and completing around the yard. This is the house I bought probably about six years ago now for eBay. Well, I bought it for myself to sell eBay out of and we're also going to cover what's been selling and a few shipping thoughts that I have. So hit that like and subscribe button and let's get going. So this is the garden bed to the right of the driveway. This bed was here when I bought the house, but I kind of renoed the whole thing. I think the only thing original to the bed is that evergreen there, which always needs trimming, and that big yew bush there. I think everything else is what I've put in. Now you can tell this is all freshly mulched, so no weeds yet. Hopefully that will stay that way for a while. I'm always weeding. This is my favorite flower of all time, peony. So this bush is gonna be lovely. It's gonna pop and I will use these for cut flowers in the house. They're the big bomb type of peony and I just love peonies. This is a little sun sculpture that I just picked up. I picked this up at Stouffer's. I think that's how to pronounce it, I always forget. And I stuck it on a little trellis and some grasses that I got from a friend's yard, and these will be blue hydrangea. So this is the bed I wanted to talk about. You guys have been asking for this. This is where that big cherry tree came out of. If you remembered when I bought the house six years ago now, can't believe it's six years already, uh, there was this big dying cherry tree. And when I bought the house, I knew I would have to deal with it. So I did, I had it taken down. And good thing, because the whole inside of the tree was rotted. And because the driveway is right here, I was afraid that the limbs would fall on me or the car. So I did have that taken down. It's going to be a year and a half now. And I put in this garden bed. So as you can see, most everything is happy. These were some daffodils. I didn't catch them early enough. They are done now. And hostas, just all the normal, normal plants, liriope, which goes around the garden bed. But the rabbits have been eating it, so I have to transplant a few in here. So that is what it's looking like. The Hinoki cypress is beautiful. Very happy with that. That is the tree that I planted. Oh, big truck going by. That is the tree that I planted to replace the cherry tree, and that should get about 15 feet high. Look at the color on this. Isn't that beautiful? It's like this really bright pop of yellow green. I love that. I did pick up some stepping stones. Where did I get these? At Ross. I bet you the tags are still on them because I'm really bad about detagging. Yep, <laughs> $4.99 really bad about detagging anything that I don't have to because I do so much scraping and just a few hydrangeas here are the new garden chairs that I hunted for for a while and I wound up finding these and yep I have already hung out on the chairs and have a, a friend coming over next week my girlfriend Patty so if you're watching Patty hey <laughs> I'm looking forward to spending time with you we'll probably sit out here and enjoy an evening big old rhododendron tree that's just coming into bloom. We love rhododendron. I love them because they're maintenance free practically. Once in a while I trim a few branches and that's it. So this bed was here. This is Pachysandra mixed with a couple of other things and I just stuck some garden stakes, a few garden stakes in that are fish. All right so that is the front yard. And now we'll take a quick walk to the back so I can show you the uh, fence project along with the new border. Okay, so this is the new fence, which when I had the fence installed, I was thinking of keeping it um, sealed so that the color stayed. As you can tell, the color has faded a little bit. But when I contacted a company or two about sealing the fence, number one, it was quite expensive. And it's my understanding you have to seal it every couple of years. And I didn't want to put that kind of money into it. So I'm just going to let it go a natural gray. I'd rather have the pretty blonde color, but it's okay. But I am thrilled with this fence. This has solved a lot of the issues that I had. 
Still have a few animals coming and going, but nothing, nothing horrible. So this is the new garden bed that we put in last year. Now the bed was here, it was like a two foot border and I just made it wider and scalloped it a little bit. So I'll just show you a few of the plants, some irises. I've showed this before when I was installing it. Stella Dior lilies, a spirea. I did lose a hydrangea, I think that is. So I just stuck in this trellis. I'm gonna plant something that is a climbing vine so that it gives some height to the garden in that area. Roses, cone flowers, all kinds of things. And I like to repeat the same flowers going down the garden bed so that your eye follows the bed. I learned that trick when I took the Master Gardener's course back in 2007, I graduated. So um, that was a great course. I think every state offers it. And uh, it was a lot of hours. I think I put in 350 hours for the course and then volunteered at least that much time, if not more. This is a blue vase planter I picked up at Community Aid. I think I paid $8 for it and was thrilled to get it. I probably won't plant anything in it because I'm not watering any pots <laughs> that I don't have to. Some beautiful grasses. I love grasses. Grasses are great. You only have to cut them down once, you know, at the end of the year. And they, they do get out of control a little bit, but they fill a big spot. They keep the weeds down. And I like the movement of grasses when the wind blows. I think it's pretty. Hellebores and spireas, roses. These are knockout roses. They are a, a bright, deep pink. So I will try to film those when they pop. Really pretty and knockouts are good because they're not as affected by disease and bugs. So there's not so much spraying and all of that. Roses are very high maintenance, most roses. There is a salvia that is not yet in bloom. And I guess it gets a little bit more shade because the one down there is in bloom. So this is gonna be a huge area all in here of Montauk daisies. I used to hate daisies and now I love them. I don't know. It's funny how your tastes change. Put another trellis there. So whatever vine I put in that trellis way down there, I'll probably mimic that here. And I'm just picking up this trellis at Christmas tree shop. I am new to Christmas tree shop. I popped in there and was pleasantly surprised. So I paid $6.99 for this trellis. I thought that was pretty good. I hope the lighting, because it's so bright sunshine today, is okay that you guys can see all of this. Uh, I think this is a boxwood. Spirea in bloom, so that's what it looks like. I think Spirea is the sage family. I'm sorry, not Spirea, Salvia. Salvia is the sage family and it has a minty smell to it. So I really like that. There's the spirea there. Another rose. This is sedum uh, autumn joy. And those will make blooms towards late summer. Another Alberta spruce. These are Stella Dior lilies. So we love those. They will be bright, bright pink. Uh, not pink, yellow. <laughs> I have no brain this morning. Three grasses. More peonies. This holly bush was here when the house, when I bought the house and it was very overgrown. So I've been trying to trim it little by little to get some kind of shape to it. I'm not quite sure that's happening yet. And these day lilies were here. So that is what it is looking like. That is the garden bed. I do have a few empty spots that will need to be filled in, but as you can tell, when the plants grow, sometimes they get so big that the spots do fill in. So I'll probably have to put something there, and maybe that's it. I might only need one or two plants. This is the, I forget what kind of tree this is. I'm gonna say ornamental cherry, that's probably wrong. And it has the cracked bark disease. So this is gonna to have to come down eventually, probably next year, maybe even in the fall. And uh, Lisa and I will probably do that project because the tree is only probably about 14 feet high. Shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> Famous last words. Love you, Lee. <laughs> okay, so that is an update of the garden bed. 
thank you guys for always being interested in what's going on around here. I think it's coming out pretty good. Very much enjoying sitting out here and just enjoying the weather. It's gorgeous here today. I think we have rain coming in, but I try to catch the sunshine when I can. All right, so that is the update of the fence and the back border. If anything really comes into bloom and it's gorgeous, I'll probably share it on Instagram. Other than that, this is the final installation of this video. And now we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna give you footage of what has sold and shipping out. I'm gonna give you a few um, ways that I ship out, show you my shipping station again. And yeah, I think that's what we're doing today. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours. So it is about 7 a.m., maybe a little bit after. I am running late this morning. Not quite sure how that happened. I think I laid in bed and drank coffee too long. But we're gonna head downstairs and pull shipping for the day. Now, eBay has been a roller coaster for me. Some days I am shipping out a ton and other days it's almost non-existent. But after eight years on eBay, I'm kind of used to that. I don't really get, you know, uh, crazy about it. But let's take a look at what's sold and we will get ready for the postal carrier. So I just have my phone here. I'm going to be looking at to see what's sold. And this morning we have eight items which like I said is a little bit slow, but I'm not gonna worry about it. The first item is this vintage Sony radio that I just picked up. I just showed picking this up and I wasn't too sure about it, but this brought $79.99 and I think I paid $9.99 for this and it wasn't on sale. So that is item number one. The next item is Liberty Craftworks Tile. This tile I bought at the auction. This was part of that auction pickup, oh, a few months ago. And, okay, I think it is this one under here. Is this it? <laughs> I'm gonna have to look again at the pick. Nope, it's the one underneath. Pretty sure it is this one. Sorry about the lighting down here this morning, guys. I didn't have time to set up any kind of box lighting, but hopefully this is good enough. And this is the tile that sold and it sold for $26.84. And I didn't itemize the pickup to see what I paid um, for each thing. That whole lot collectively, I paid $650 and buyer's premium, I believe. No, I think $650 was with the buyer's premium. So this tile is definitely making profit, but I've already made a ton of profit on that pickup. Next item up are the Ralph Lauren uh, drapes, which I showed, what did I show? I showed those hanging when I had washed them and I just packed them away. <laughs> Back out they come. Sometimes that happens. So the drapes are gonna be in this bin here, curtains and drapes. And let's see if I can, I can probably, yeah, have to put the camera down. I was gonna say I can probably lift this, but this quilt bin is heavy. So I'm gonna put the camera down. All right, so this is the drapes. Boy, it's dark down here this morning. These are the Ralph Lauren drapes, and they are all cleaned and packaged. Beautiful quality. I'll pull those out and just throw this cover like that. Let's bring these over into the light so we can see them. All right. Of my phone. So these are four panels. Gorgeous, gorgeous quality. Now I pre-treated these. I soaked them. They are in great condition, but they did have a little tiny bit of, I'm going to call it yellowing in spots, and I soaked them and, uh, and line dried them, or hung dry them, I should say, because I don't have a line down here. <laughs> I am looking for the tag for you guys so you can see it. Look at that print, so beautiful. And there is the label, Ralph Lauren. And four panels, like I said. Let's see what I got for them, $100.65. And what did I pay for these? I think I paid $5 collectively, so that was a great pickup. Next up is Allbirds Men's Sneakers. I got $36.60. 
And men's sneakers are going to be on this rack over here. All birds. Okay, maybe I really should have turned on better lighting. Let's see if we can find the all birds. Now the sneakers, I don't really, um, any kind of shoes, I'm not marking them, which is maybe a mistake as this grows bigger because, you know, after a while they all look alike. So I always have to be really careful that I am sending out the correct shoes. Okay, so here are the all birds. I wound up putting these on the shoe rack because looking at them, I really didn't consider them a sneaker. It's kind of like a kind of like a cross between a sneaker and a shoe but there is the label there and I said what I got for them $36.60 and I think I paid $7.47 for those next up a pair of Gap 1969 baby boot jeans and let's go over to women's jeans now I still have not picked up jeans for women probably maybe one or two pairs, if that, in the past year. I have stopped selling or picking up. I haven't stopped selling them because they're all here. But I have stopped picking them up because they don't do well for me. I don't do well with women's jeans. I think jeans are probably the number one item that people have a hard time with the fit, especially women's jeans. Men's jeans I sell a ton of. I think men are just less picky, I'm going to call it, about how jeans fit. And I count myself in that. I really want jeans to be comfortable, but of course, give me a good shape. And um, yeah, so let's find these jeans. These are a 28S 6S. So the 6 is short. So we are going to look for jeans. There's 810. This is the women's jeans right here for 6. Okay, so I had to do a little bit of digging, but here they are. Gap 28 short baby boot women's jeans. I'm just going to look at the phone right here and see what is next on the list. Patagonia Cinchilla Men's Gray Fleece Jacket, $29.28, which I think is a great deal for the buyer. Okay, so it's either going to be in um, outdoor jackets and vests, or it will be in kind of like a sweatshirt bin. So I did dig to the bottom of this and it was not in outdoor jackets. So the next bin that I would look in is men's fleece. That happens for me once in a while, but it's not a big time waste. It takes a couple of seconds, especially if I'm not holding the camera. And I always, almost always, 98% <laughs> of the time know where to look if something is, uh, is missing, I'll call it. But it's not really missing, it's just in a different bin than I think. So there is the men's Patagonia jacket. And let's go on to the next item. The next item is a Ben Hogan uh, men's polo, and it is a striped one blue. So men's polos are over here. I have them in solids and I have them in print. So it's going to be there. I'm just going to throw this bin back together and then we can pull that bin down. Now, I know a lot of resellers use smaller bins, so there is less to dig through. But when I started this, I gave that great thought, and I thought I'd rather have more items per bin than to have more bins, you know, as a smaller size. So let's just pull this one down. Ben Hogan, it's a blue stripe. <laughs> Lots of polos. Is this it? Nope, that's Polo Golf. Peter Millar. Where are you, Ben? Oh, this is it, I think. Yes, Ben Hogan performance. This is for golf. All right, so we have these three up here. Okay, I'm going to shut off the camera for this part of it because I have to get serious and pull a few more and be on time for my postal carrier. But I figured I'd throw this footage in, so this video will be kind of like a mix of all things going on. All right, stay tuned. So this is what it looks like when I carry the items upstairs. I usually take the clothing first and ship that out because that's going to be the easiest. It's already all tissue paper and packed, and so I get those items out. Shoes are very easy. Most times men's shoes will go in a shoebox, the USPS shoebox, which you can get free on USPS site. These type of items are going to get a lot of packing. Anything that is fragile or breakable, I will um, put packing paper around them or tissue paper, depending on if the item is something that would rip the tissue paper. So I do carry three kinds of tissue paper, plain, 
which gets stuffed inside the shoes, eBay paper, which I get free with my subscription. And then usually I have a nicer paper. Melissa sent me this one, which I absolutely love. And she recently, for Mother's Day, included in my package, look at these beautiful tissue papers. I might hoard that one. I love that one. Just gorgeous. So if you don't know about Melissa's boxes, Melissa does Patreon and puts together gorgeous reseller boxes. And um, these are some of the papers that come in them. Oh, do we love that one? Yes, we do. Daisies on gold. Doesn't get any better than that. So for Mother's Day, she sent me all kinds of gifts. Melissa sends the most beautiful gifts, and she included some of her tissue paper. Just stunning. So if the item is really special or, you know, it's a high dollar item, I use a nicer tissue paper. But the linens that I ship out will be in a number seven box, which I keep those in great supply. This is the number seven box here, and you can always tell the dimensions, the boxes are printed with them. So I will try to get those four drapery panels, the Ralph Lauren ones, into a box. When you ship out in boxes, you always have to be careful and know the weight of your boxes, of what weight that's gonna add to your item. But that is pretty much what's going on here this morning. This tile will be wrapped with tissue paper and always bubble wrap for the breakable items. Lots of bubble wrap and packing peanuts. So I keep everything in this one area here so that my shipping is as fairly quick as possible. And this is my office right now, kind of in disarray because I am waiting for the new desktop. When I get the new desktop, it's going to replace this white Pottery Barn desk and it's going to come all the way to the edges. It's going to sit on top of these IKEA cabinets. And I will show you that whole situation. These drawers are perfect and I researched this a lot. All of my poly bags fit perfectly. So when I get ready to ship, all of my poly bags and padded mailers are down here, fit in this cabinet. So that works out great. And I will be on a hunt for a new chair because this chair is done. But I am being really picky with what I purchase because I spend so much time in here. But that is what is going on. And let's get the shipping ready. So here I'm just showing the Allbirds shoes packed up in this box. Now when you ship shoes in a box, try saying that three times fast, ship shoes, you have to know the weight of your box because some boxes are very heavy and will throw the weight into the next category. So you really want to put shoes that won't get damaged into a poly mailer. If the box weight is going to throw it into another category, you never want to have your shipping be raised too high by the weight of the packaging. So this box is the USPS shoe box. And I know that these boxes weigh five ounces. I try to keep track of what my standard boxes weigh. And that way, in my mind, I always know where the weight of the shipping is going to fall, if all of that makes sense. So we are all packed up with the All Bird shoes, all tissue papered and nicely presented in a USPS shoe box. And now I'm going to create the label and stick it on there. Next up is the tile. And when I have items that have a delicate finish, a tile is just a beautiful piece of artwork. I always put tissue paper. I know some people feel tissue paper might be a waste, but I really want to protect the finish of the tile. So this is two pieces of the eBay tissue paper. And while this does nothing to protect against breakage, I feel it does cushion an art piece, especially for the, you know, the surface, the finish. But of course, I will then wrap it in bubble wrap. Sometimes I even put a third layer of this packing paper and then, of course, packing peanuts and whatever kind of fill the box needs. So a breakable tile like this will always go in a box. And I will show you what that looks like when it is all packed up. All right, so here is the Liberty Craftworks tile, all bubble wrapped. As you can see, I use multiple layers of the bubble wrap. Let me just shut this drawer. 
and this is the box I have chosen. Now, while I use a lot of USPS boxes and I always look at, you know, the regional boxes or the flat rate boxes, a lot of times a non-USPS box will work out better. This is just a Werther's Original <laughs> Yum hard candy box. I get these from the grocery store. Sometimes when I'm in Dollar Tree, I look for small boxes. But let's go ahead and put packing peanuts into this box to create a really good cushion. And I do this with one hand. So this bin works out great with packing peanuts because when I have two hands, when I'm not holding the camera, I can just pop my box right into the bin and fill it very quickly to create that cushion for the tile. So now this tile is gonna get nestled in there. We're gonna to top it off with packing peanuts and maybe even another piece of tissue paper or not tissue paper, packing paper. And then we'll close the box up and it'll be ready to go. One more thing I realized I wanted to add is that when you fill a box with packing peanuts, you want to overfill it. So it really looks like a mountain of packing peanuts. And then when you close it, you're really pressing it down so that the packing peanuts Peanuts don't have anywhere to move. They stay perfectly still and that item is totally tight in there. You never want your item to move within the box because, you know, there's so much damage capability in shipping, the shipping process, I should say, that you really want to overfill your box with packing peanuts if you're using packing peanuts. And really, when you close this, it's really tight in there. So I'm going to go ahead and close the box and create the label. So here's the box all taped up. As you can see, it's got a little bit of a dome because those packing peanuts are really, you know, high in there, but that's not a problem. One thing I do want to mention is when you're using like a grocery store box or a box that did not come from USPS or UPS or FedEx, you really want to make sure that the box printing is acceptable to the different carriers. You cannot use boxes that are from any alcohol products, firearms, uh, flammable liquids, anything like that, any kind of um, item that would create fire, and uh, no beer boxes, no wine boxes, no liquor boxes. If you're going to use one of those boxes, you have to put it inside of a poly mailer or some other wrap so that the printing does not show. So that's my understanding. You can check, I'm sure, all their regulations on USPS, but for now, this is the Werther's candy box, which is totally fine, and I'm going to put that label on there and ship it out. The next item that I'm working on shipping out are these Ralph Lauren drapes. Now these are quite a bit of material, but I'm going to try to put it into USPS number seven box. I use these boxes a ton. This is a large mailing box. It's not the flat rate box, which I hardly ever use medium or large flat rate box. I just don't find that those work out economical, but this is how I'm going to ship these. First, I put tissue paper down, not for any kind of protection, but just to make a nicer presentation. Tissue paper is, this tissue paper is free when you have a store subscription, but even if you buy tissue paper, a piece of tissue paper is costing you two cents. To me, presentation for somebody who has spent $100 on drapes is definitely a must. So I will pack these up really nice so that when the buyer gets them, they know they're all washed, there's a thank you card, and it's just a nice experience, hopefully, for the buyer. That's really high on my priority list. So I'm going to go ahead and pack the drapes up and put them into the box, and we shall see what that looks like. So this is what the drapes look like. They fit really nicely. I did fold them as carefully as I could, but the buyer most likely is going to have to either steam these or use a light pressing because they are washed and line dried. But I think that, you know, taking this much care um, shows that the drapes are beautiful and that they were well cared for, if that makes sense. So I do include, or I try to always include, a little card that just says thank you. And I will close this over first. And tuck that all in. And then put an additional piece of tissue paper just to really make it look nice. And that's what that looks like. 
and then the card will go in probably between the two pieces of tissue paper and I will close the box up, weigh it, and create the label. Here is a shot of a sweater set that the sale just came in and I figured I had just finished packing the last item but I would throw this in. This is a Land's End Cashmere sweater set or twin set. It has the shell and size 10, 12 medium women's. So I'm just gonna quickly pack this up and get this out the door. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't because a lot of times on Friday or even Sunday night, I will have to ship out twice. But when I can just quickly pack something up and just get it right in the same shipment, that always works. So as you can see, I'm using the pretty tissue paper for this gorgeous set. I will try to insert a photo of this because I'm not even looking at what this sold for. I think I sent offers and this might've been $44 and I probably paid $4.75 for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pack this one up and get it out the door. One more thing I wanted to mention is some of you have been asking why I use the clear Ziploc bags before putting it into the outer packaging. I feel there's a couple of reasons. Number one, you can really compress the air out of it so that you're able to fit items into smaller packaging. So here, this is a double sweater set. And if I did not compress all the air out of it, I would have a very hard time fitting it into this padded flat rate mailer. But because it's going out that way, I think it looks nicer and it fits into a better packaging choice. So that is one of the reasons. Number two, if the outer packaging ever gets a hole or is ripped, I feel that the clear um, bag will protect it and keep it dry and a little more safe. I buy these bags from whoever is running the best price point. So a lot of times when I'm ordering these, I'm ordering thousands of them. So I really am conscious of how much I'm spending. And I just go on Amazon and type in clear poly bag or Ziploc bag. And I look at the sizes. I order them probably in four different sizes. So you just have to know what you're shipping out to know what size makes sense for your business. All right, I'm just going to slip this guy in here and get him out the door. So this is what the box looks like for the Sony radio right before closing it up. I do have quite a bit of packing paper in there, peanuts and bubble wrap. Now, if you're selling on this level, this is my opinion. You need to purchase supplies because I know a lot of us can get different supplies from like stores that are throwing out their bubble wrap, whether it be like an automotive center or a, um, you know, a liquor center, something like that. But you really need to have all of this stuff right here on hand. And if you look at the cost per piece, I think this is well worth it. I wind up getting this packing paper from Walmart and it costs me six cents a piece. So I'm not using a ton of this, probably two to three pieces go in a box. So for 18 cents, you know, for something that I'm going to make great profit on, it's so worth it. And this just makes it so easy to have everything set up like this. This is not like something that costs a lot of money to have a simple old dresser to keep all of your supplies. And then you just hang closet racks or curtain racks above it and you put your papers not very costly and it just makes the whole process easier so I'm going to go ahead and just put one more piece of bubble wrap on top to hold all of these peanuts in place and print this last label <laughs> all of a sudden I'm competing with the birds to sign off on this video thanks so much for watching go out and get what's yours